Good morning and welcome to this worship service of the First Presbyterian Church of Tuscaloosa. So glad that you have chosen to join us by television or by live streaming. We remain in broadcast only mode here at First Pres, so be sure to check the church emails, website, or social media to keep up with all the latest church news. And don't forget that UPERC is open again at the corner of 20th and University. The session of the church met this last week and received a progress report from the reopening task force. The task force still has some work to finish, uh, but they are also closely monitoring numbers and health conditions in our community. So as soon as there is any change to how we worship, we will, of course, let you know. We wanted to let you know that the session did vote to approve some small gatherings here at the church. There would, of course, be restrictions and requirements on those events, but we feel that we can begin to gather again at the church, particularly outside the Rose Garden. is such a beautiful place to be and enjoy. If we maintain our distance and keep our numbers limited, we believe that we can mitigate the risks of this virus. So you can look forward to opportunities to reconnect with your church family soon. 
<clears throat> the session also approved a congregational meeting, a distance congregational meeting to be conducted by mail and electronically this month. The purpose of this meeting is to elect new officers and members of the nominating committee and an associate pastor search committee. These were all items that were originally scheduled to be attended to at a March 29th congregational meeting. So rather than waiting until we can all be back together for an in-person congregational meeting, and who knows when that would be, we are going to have this distance congregational meeting beginning June 18th voting will begin June 18th. So you will be emailed and mailed uh, details about this beginning this coming week. <clears throat> Thanks again to all who have maintained their giving to the church. As we enter the summer months, ordinarily we drop in our giving, but that drop started a little early this year as we are behind in receipts for the month of May. So again, maintaining giving is so very helpful and appreciated. And if you are not able to give at this time, we understand. Today, we welcome to the pulpit the Reverend Rachel Winter, who will be preaching today. You might know her as Pastor Rachel, and I no, our children will recognize her as she is serving as our interim director of children's ministry. So welcome, Rachel. As you have heard in this time of shutdown, these worship services are recorded early in the week, uploaded to the TV station on Thursday morning, and then, of course, broadcast on Sunday morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. This has worked well for the most part, but we encountered a downside last week. Last Sunday, we gathered for our broadcast-only worship service in our homes in the midst of a very troubling, chaotic, and violent time for our country. And yet, because of when the service was filmed, there was no mention of that unfolding crisis. There was silence. And that disturbed me greatly as I watched our service. That silence was due to TV production schedules, but there have been other times that I and perhaps we have remained silent about things when we should have spoken about them. Now is not a time for silence concerning the terrible things that we have witnessed in our country in recent days, lest that silence be misunderstood as complicity or even approval. We need to speak about this situation, pray about it, and then act to change it. There are systems, ways of doing things. We often say, well, that's just how things work. Well, they don't work for everyone. These systems, they are, these are the systems. We did not set them up. We inherited them. Well, we are now caretakers of these systems in which all of society must function. And as caretakers, we must face some facts. We must face the fact that our systems are not fair for all people. We must face the fact that people like most of you and me, most of the time, benefit from these systems in ways that others do not. We must face the fact that too many of our systems are broken and need to be changed and fixed. And not just so that our country won't be burned to the ground, but because we have been created and called to build the kingdom of God. We are taught by Jesus to pray and are called to make things look on earth as it is in heaven. It is our calling to build the kingdom of God, a kingdom of peace and justice, love and mercy, fairness and equality, where all have a place at the table. In terms of the systems that are broken and need fixing, it is us, uniquely us, who have that responsibility and capacity. We who benefit the most 
from the systems as they are, and we who are in positions of power, decision-making, and influence, we must change and fix what's broken. Riots and fires aren't going to fix anything. We have to do it. We must fix what is broken. It is our calling as Christians, and we as white Christians, we are in position to change it. It will take all people working together, of course, but we have a unique and critical role to play in changing things. Now, you may take umbrage at that, say I'm simplifying things too much or being too political, but it is true. We all know that. We must change and fix the systems which are broken or they will never be fixed and we will remain stuck in this un tenable circumstance in which we find ourselves today. Whether we are Republicans, Democrats, or Independents, it doesn't matter. We are Christians. And so we have a responsibility. We are called to fix what is broken and build the kingdom of God. We will pray about this today, but we need to do more than just pray about it. We need to act to change. I invite you to reflect upon this now as we sing our hymn of reflection. If you choose not to sing, I would invite you to at least read the words of this powerful hymn. Thank you.
friends, let us rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look, look at, at your heavens, heavens the, work the work of your, your fingers, fingers, what, what are mortals that, that you are mindful of them and care, care for them? them? Yet you have made them a little lower than yourself and crowned them with glory and honor. You have, you have created beautifully and given, given us dominion over creation. creation. And because you care for us, you call us to the same care for creation. All things under our feet, in the air, in the seas. O oh Lord, Lord our God, God how, how majestic is your name in all the earth. earth. Let, Let us worship God. God. let us pray. Holy God, we do indeed stand in awe of you. We rejoice that you have chosen us to be your own. By your word, the heavens were made. Your loving kindness fills the whole earth. By the bounty of your mercy, we have been born to new life. Hear now the fanfare we give you as we lift our voices in praise of your name. Amen.
Friends, creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love God reveals. Yet Jesus, the Son, carried our sins to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us so that we can praise God, our Maker, Savior, and Redeemer. Let us confess our sins that we may receive such grace. Friends, let us come to God. O oh God, when we are put to the test, we do not quickly respond. If called upon to decide, we lack the courage of faith. Confessing commitment, we confuse your will with our own. Seeking security, we turn to devices that we control. Your voice comes from heaven to chasten and discipline. Your commandments Jesus proclaimed as a course we should take. Forgive us when we deviate from the truth you deliver and increase our trust in you. Hear us now as we take some time in silent prayer. Amen. As Jesus met his disciples on the mountain, he is with us today, even to the close of the age. With authority, he commissions us to service. With redeeming love, he sets us aright when we fall. All who humbly approach him, seeking forgiveness for their sins, can live with this assurance since Christ died for us all. Alleluia. Amen. As Jesus greeted his disciples on the mountain, let us turn to one another as we share a sign of God's love. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Peace, Peace, Andy. Peace, Rachel. Peace, Michael. Peace, Michael. Peace, Rachel. Peace, friends. Peace, Suzanne. Peace be with you. All right. Well, good to see you, boys and girls. Uh, I'm excited to tell you today about some, in special, uh, some special instructions that Jesus gave to his uh, disciples. But, but before I do that, I don't know, ministers, y'all seem just a little too close today. Could, could, could y'all spread out, maybe? Could, could y'all? You know. yeah. Thanks, thanks. Mm, yeah, a little spread out. Let's spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a little more. A little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A little, little more. A little more. What about? What about here? Mm, yeah, yeah. A little more. A little more. You spread out. You know, spread, spread out, Luann. Spread out. Spread out. You're probably good. Here. Go for it, man. Spread out. I'm serious. <laughs> spread out. That's good, okay, and yeah, get on out there. All right, excellent. Now you're spread out, excellent. Okay, so now on the count of three, I want you to call out, God loves you. Can you do it? All right, one, two, three. God, God loves you. you. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, ministers. You, you can come back to your seats. You have helped me to illustrate those instructions that I'm going to tell the boys and girls about. They came from Jesus, and he told these things to his disciples just before he left earth and ascended to heaven. And he said to his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded, and remember, I am with you always. Those are very special instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples. They're so special that they have a special name. It's called the Great Commission. So those are great instructions, a great commission that Jesus gave to his followers. And what he meant by that was go, go out into the world, spread out into the world and tell everyone about God's love and invite them to be a part of God's family. Well, those were the instructions that Jesus gave to his followers all those many years ago, but they are still good instructions for us today. We are supposed to spread out across our neighborhoods and city and world and tell and show people God's love and invite them to be a part of God's family. And one more thing, we should remember that Jesus is always with us in our hearts. So will you pray with me now? Let's pray. Dear God, Dear, Dear God, God, we love you. We, we love, love you. you. Thank you for giving us helpful instructions. Thank, Thank you, you for giving, giving us helpful, helpful instructions. instructions. Help us to obey your great commission. Help, Help us to obey your great commission. By spreading out. By spreading out. Sharing with people your love. Sharing with people your love. And remembering you are always with us. And remembering you are always with us. In Jesus' name we pray. In, In Jesus', Jesus name, name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. See you next week, boys and girls. Friends, let us pray. God, we humbly ask that you now speak to us. In the reading and proclaiming of your word, speak to us. Heal us, help us, convict us, free us. Direct us, transform us. God, we humbly ask that you now speak to us and help us to listen. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at verse 16. Let us listen for God's word to us. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Let us pray. Oh God, I ask you to be with us as we hear your word read today. Be with me as I try to proclaim it. Be with us. Open us. Open our minds and our hearts. For we pray in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and Christ. Amen. Hi, friends. It may be a surprise to you that I'm here today. I'm glad Michael already introduced me. I'm thankful for that. Most of you know that I worked with our New Kirk students for a few months before Andy got here last fall, and that I've been working with our sweet, 
precious and precocious and very smart kids since then. Some of you may know that I'm an ordained minister and some of you might not. And that's totally cool. No worries at all. Most of all, I'm very thankful that you have welcomed me into your midst and into your church community over this past year. That you have asked me to walk with your children in the midst of their faith journeys. Needless to say, these past few months have been a challenging time for all of us. A time that has changed from day to day, even from minute to minute. These months on our journey have been really interesting because they are a critical time in our church year. And they brought us to this day, Trinity Sunday. It's hard to believe that as we have been physically separated from each other, we have come to this day. That we have been together as a spiritual community. We have been together spiritually to celebrate Lent, to celebrate Holy Week, Easter, that 50 days has passed to bring us to Pentecost last Sunday when the Holy Spirit breathed and blew through a room to form life, to breathe life into a group of believers, to form a community of faith on that Pentecost day. And we have come to today. Trinity Sunday is the day of our church year that follows Pentecost. And it's the Sunday when we preachers and you seekers get to wrap our head around the very easy concept of the Holy Trinity. Kidding. It's really not that easy. Like entire weeks of theology classes in seminary are devoted to the doctrine of the Trinity. So it's not that easy, I promise. But as the church is called together and formed, it's important for all of us to think about God. About why we believe. About who God is to us about how we share our beliefs with each other. We might not fully understand how to do this. In fact, as scripture assures us, we never fully will understand how to do this until we see face to face with God. But it is important that we take this time, this Trinity Sunday, to sing holy, holy, holy together. And to learn, to listen, to examine, to ask, who is God in our lives? Who is Jesus Christ? Who is Spirit? How do they work together? How are they interconnected? Who and how are they three in one? And perhaps the most important question for our world, particularly on this day, after this last week in our world and in our country and our lives, where is the triune God at work in our world and our hurting, aching, bleeding world? So let's think about it together. God, creator, father, maker, strong, mother hen, Yahweh, helper, shepherd, deliverer, rock, Judge, refuge, strength, sustainer. Christ, Jesus, Redeemer, Lord, Emmanuel, Logos. I bet our kids know that one. Son of God, Savior, Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Teacher, The Good Shepherd, Carpenter, Friend, light of the world. Holy Spirit, comforter, dove, intercessor, presence of God, breath, ruah, counselor, helper, enabler, inspiration. These are just some, some of the images I thought of for the persons or parts of the Trinity. And I'm sure I know I've left lots of them out. These images are so beautiful and, I, and they have been so meaningful in my life and in my faith journey. And I can't imagine trying to explain my faith story to others without them. In this final 
words to the, to the 11 disciples on the mountain, Jesus leaves them with this charge. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded of you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus asks the disciples to go and to share about him, to go and share their faith with others, to go and show their faith with others. Baptize, he says. Teach them what I have told you. Remember my words and remember that I am with you always, always. And sharing their faith stories and stories about God, I would hope that they used some of these images, that God is their creator and rock, their mother hen and shepherd, that Jesus is their friend and savior, their counselor and the light of the world, that their spirit is the counselor and dove, their presence of God, their helper and breath. I would hope that they use words I could never imagine or dream of in sharing their own stories. And I hope that you do too when you share your own stories of God, your stories of faith, your own images. That's one of the many reasons I love working with the kids here at their church. I love watching them draw pictures. I love hearing them sing songs about their faith. I love watching their minds at work, just thinking about who God is and how would they and how they de would describe God to others. This great commission was a call to the disciples on the mountain that day so long ago. And it's a call to all of us today to share our stories of faith with each other, to share about God's great love. And in sharing about that love, we need to share about all of these parts of the Trinity, about a shepherding God of creation who helps us and is our strength. We need to revel in and proclaim a redeeming Christ who is salvation and a light for the world who is a prince of peace. We need to breathe in and breathe out and tell of a spirit who breathes in as an advocate and counselor, a dove of intercession for a very broken world. Friends, as Pentecost people, we are now commissioned to go out into the world. And we can't go, into, go out into that world without proclaiming the God of the Trinity. Because we are baptized, we are baptized into the wholeness of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. These images, yes, and so many more. We are not disconnected from the God, our, from God, our creator, the redeeming work of Christ in human skin, or the enabling work of the spirit that blows through us each and every day. Because we have been baptized, we are called to be people of baptism, people who proclaim and celebrate and live that baptism in every single thing we do. That is a message we need to hear in our world today. This world is hurting and aching. We are broken and isolated because of disease. We have lost so many loved ones, friends and strangers, too many. A hundred thousand, well over that, just in the past three months. So many of us are alone and unable to see loved ones. There is so much financial strain. So many among us who are hungry 
needing help just to eat every day. People are scared and alone. And again, just in the past month, and especially in this past week, we have been reminded over and over again how systemic racism haunts every part of our country's history and life. And we have been reminded of our own complicity in it. In the wake of all that has happened this past week in our country, I found myself at a loss for words, crying every single day, not knowing what to say or how to say it. And I think that's a good thing. I probably shouldn't have the words. Instead, I have read, I've listened, I've studied, I've watched. I've sat in prayer and meditation and listened to what my African-American brothers and sisters have been saying. And thinking about the Great Commission as I've worked on this sermon this week, and thinking about how Jesus would have us witness in the world, I've looked at our brokenness and thinking about how Jesus would work on justice in our world. I read a statement from the Reverend Dr. Brian Blunt in what he shared this week with our world. Brian is the president of Union Presbyterian Seminary in Richmond, Virginia. He's an African-American brother in Christ. I think it's important for us to listen to what he has to say. As predominantly white brothers and sisters in Christ, I think we need to listen. He says this about how we, as white brothers and sisters in Christ, might witness in the world. And I think it's really important considering our scripture for today, our Great Commission. This is long what he has to say, but I think it's really important for this scripture. Listen with open ears and an open heart. If white Christians were to ask me as a black Christian what they should do in response to the spiral of racially sparked violence into which we are rapidly and inevitably descending, I have pondered the response I would give. I feel compelled to share because I am afraid. I am afraid because I fear that my voice is too insignificant to matter. I am afraid because I fear that while what I say bears insufficient weight to make a difference, it carries just enough potency to get me in trouble. I am afraid because I fear bringing trouble on myself when my people are writhing in a perpetual abyss of systemic injustice. I am afraid because I fear that one day, long after I have died, my son and daughter will still weep at news about a black individual murdered while sitting in her home, running in his community, walking home from his corner store, driving in her car, standing in his front yard, exploring in his park, worshiping in her church, lying helpless on an American street, the full weight of a cavalier, almost casually, curiously disinterested, white anger crushing his throat beneath its self-righteous, imperious knee. I am afraid because I fear a reckoning on the streets if we cannot find injustice in the courts, redress it in our politics, realignment of our institutional policies, and reconsideration of our racial values. I am afraid because I fear that when I am called to my own final reckoning, the record will show that I didn't do my part. I didn't witness not enough. White Christians are not witnessing, not enough. In the apocalypse, the world is possessed by systemic evil. Rome wanted to be worshipped. Christ believers, that is us, could respond in two ways. They could patriotically idealize Rome, idolize Rome, 
or they could witness to the Lordship of Christ. Either or. Rome promised to punish anyone who refused to render the reverence it believed it was due. Writing to seven churches located in the belly of this imperial bestial declaration of religious and political supremacy, John of Patmos pleaded for a witness to an alternative truth. The only leader who deserved fidelity and worship was Jesus, who died on a Roman cross. It was not Rome's empire, but his resurrected reign that should be revered and realized. He did his part. Our Christian part is to witness to that reign in the way we speak our words and live our lives. What does a reign under the Lordship of Christ look like? If we could see into God's future the way John saw through this open door into transcendence, perhaps we, perhaps we would know we are not that far-sighted. But our hindsight ought to be 2020, because it is written in a record for all of us. If Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ of the apocalypse, then we have a glimpse of what a reign under his rule would look like. We have something for which to witness. In the gospel vision, there lepers are touched. There are no Eric Garners who cannot breathe. There the sick are unilaterally healed. There are no Ahmad Arberries hunted to death. There codes and laws too legalistically and unjustly applied are broken. There are no Brianna Taylors shot when their homes are broken into. There, men, once capacitated by paralysis, are able to walk. There are no George Floyds paralyzed beneath the, we beneath the weight of police officers. Their systemic of ethnic segregation are broken open by the vision of a house of prayer for all nations. There is no aspiration of a rule where one people structure society so that it perpetually privileges them and those like them. We know from hindsight that the promise of Jesus' vision, we know what it intends. Our calling is to witness, it, is to, witness to it, no matter the cross. I am afraid because I know I am not witnessing, Blunt says, not enough. I am afraid because I know that white Christians are not witnessing, not enough. Why does our country need more white Christians to witness more than they are? More now even than black Christians and black people of every faith and no faith. Whether it's individual acts of brutality or systematic oppression, it is hard to maneuver successfully for change when your hands are shackled, your legs are taken out from beneath you, and someone is kneeling on your neck. You need the people who wield economic, political, police, and military power to reign in the agents they have authorized to act on their behalf, to rain down change upon the system, upon the systems their forebears have spent centuries erecting, to privilege themselves. You need them to witness not just spiritual, spiritually, tangibly, not just from the pulpit and in the sanctuary, out in the streets, on the streets of their cities and the corridors of their power. We Christian people can make a difference by our witness before it's too late. Before it's too late. Those words that Blunt gives us, the words that Brian gives us, these are tough words to hear. They were tough for me to read. They convicted me. They're tough. They're challenging. And friends, they are true. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, our Christ says to us. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Our hymn asks the words, They will know we are Christians by our love. How will they know we are Christians, the world asks. Is it by our witness? Will they know we are Christians by our love? Or will it be too late? Thanks be to God. Amen. Because this service was recorded earlier in the week, you will find today's prayer concerns on the email listing. Seeing these three roses reminds us that even in turbulent times, we gratefully welcome the birth of children and lift up their families in prayer. We pray for Brittany and R.T. Floyd, who have a newborn daughter, Hannah Thomas Floyd, who was born last Wednesday, May 27th. Due to COVID-19, Brittany and Hannah are both at Children's Hospital in Birmingham. Dad R.T. and big brothers Brady and Carson Dickey and grandparents Charles and Lenora McKinney are recovering as well at home. We pray for Miller and Bliss Wright, who have a new baby boy, Cook David Wright, born Saturday in a Memphis hospital. Traveling the distance, grandparents David and Shannon Wright were glad to lay eyes on the child. Great-grandmother Betty Hayes and great-aunt and uncle Fran and Britt Turner await the opportunity to do the same. We pray for Jensen and Ed Henderson, who have a new baby girl, Allie Mae Henderson, born Monday at DCH. Due to her early arrival, Allie Mae will stay in the NICU for several weeks. Jensen expects to be in the hospital a few more days. Prayers for new grandparents, Mike and Cindy Henderson, who are with family in Canada at this time. Knowing that we are never beyond God's reach, we lay our hopes and fears before the Lord as we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, in calling forth creation from nothing, revealing yourself in human flesh, and pouring out your wisdom to guide us, you display your concern for your whole universe. We give you thanks, O God, for our world, which you made and renewed in the power of Jesus' resurrection. For you created each of us in your image and declared us good. Make us wise and careful bearers of your gifts as we live together in our communities, in our country, our world. We pray that the love which passes ceases ceaselessly between Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each person, opening our eyes and ears to see and hear the pain particularly of our brothers and sisters of color, the injustices experienced at the hands of one another. Draw us all into action that reveals and lifts up, into action that values all of life. We pray for our leaders to discern a straight path in the midst of many voices, a path which lets justice roll down like an ever-flowing stream, a path broad enough for everyone. We pray for our families, our households, and our communities that your life together as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit may show us the importance of each of us and so strengthen us in your grace and truth. We pray for the sick and those who suffer in any way, for those who struggle to pay rent or a mortgage, for those who have no home, for those who are neglected and abused in our communities, for people who long to be near family and yet are sheltering alone, 
for newborn children and their families as they struggle with threats from within and without. God of all goodness, hear our need. Holy, holy, holy Lord, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, and that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. It is with the words of your Son, Jesus, that we are taught to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus sends his disciples into the world to bless all by his grace. With God's love and the Holy Spirit, let us make this offering to the Lord.
Let us pray. For all that you have given us, we thank you, God, for day and night, evening and morning, for land and sea, for fish and birds, plants and animals, for humankind, for your Son who came among us with the gift of life. Let your Holy Spirit abide in our midst, encouraging us to listen and giving us wisdom to act, using our gifts that all people may know peace and life abundant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, let us go from this place to love and to serve our Lord and to love and to serve each other. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.